i.e. it is time for our parenting slot. Uh, consulting psychologist David Carey joins us once again, uh, along with uh, Brian's arse, which is on the other side of me here in the studio <laughs> when he tries to fix the, com- Not the computer. A picture, it's I must hard say. to tell which is the more delightful <laughs> at the moment. Uh, David, how are you today? I'm just fine. Uh, first question for you is, uh, my eldest son is 10 and autistic, and my youngest is 7. The eldest son uh, does seem to love his little brother and always asks for him when he's not around, but when he gets, uh, but when he gets annoyed, upset, or hurt himself, he seeks out his younger brother to either thump, bite, or headbutt him. It's getting so bad that the youngest is starting to say he wishes the eldest wasn't his brother. We've tried several interventions suggesting to us, but nothing seems to work. The eldest knows when he's hurt him, and then tries to console him. We're worn out trying to play referee, but I'm more concerned with the mental health of my youngest son. This is a very, very good uh, question and statement, because it illustrates the fact that autism is a family condition. Mm. It doesn't just affect the individual on the spectrum. And one of the things we know from research is that the siblings of people with autism are very often overlooked in the family uh, need to get services and support for the index child, the child with autism. And they suffer, and they often suffer silently. Now, this little boy who is 10 and on the spectrum gets upset from time to time and gets extremely distressed, and then he seeks out the closest attachment to him, for whatever reason, his little brother, to uh, act out his uh, distress and discomfort. There isn't an easy fix for this. Uh, What mom and dad have to do is to try to watch for the earliest possible warning signs of distress in the boy with autism and intervene uh, very quickly using distraction or soothing and low arousal interventions and prevent him from getting close enough to hurt the younger son. Eventually, and perhaps not now, the younger son is going to have to uh, be educated a little bit about autism and the fact that his brother is different, but we love him and he loves you just the same and he does things and he makes mistakes just like you do and we're all going to try to make the world a better place for the 10 year old the uh, the secret uh, and it's a hard one to achieve actually is to create an autism friendly environment mm. the more autism specific and friendly the environment at home and at school and anywhere the more the person with autism thrives and feels comfortable they need routine they need predictability they don't like surprises um, so the unexpected can very much upset them. Now, the yeah. unexpected often happens because this is family life and you Especially cannot create... Especially with a seven-year-old. Is with a be, seven-year-old, yeah. of course. And who knows what's going on with the ten-year-old. He's in school now, of course. Uh, we don't know the level of his autism, the severity of it, where he is on the spectrum, uh, and how frequently this is happening. We don't know also. But it sounds like it's getting a little bit serious because he's of an age where he could really hurt the seven-year-old mm. in Inadvertently. Yeah. So I think we need to try to help the seven year old understand a little bit that this is part of the brother's condition and we're going to love him and do what we can. The real uh, trick is noticing the very earliest signals of distress. Yeah. and intervening in the chain of events. If uh, this distress turns into genuine and unexpected aggression, then it's time to consult your GP and perhaps a child psychiatrist with a specialty in autism because there are medications that can be quite helpful for mm. children and or adults and adolescents on the spectrum who can be unpredictably aggressive and or violent. You don't want to go down that road until the last extreme. It brings up another point because whilst waiting to come on air, I was reading uh, the newspaper out there, and yet again we have uh, more cuts in education for services uh, for children with special needs. A 10% increase this year in uh, children identified with a special education need in our primary schools. 10% more coming into the system with no additional resource being provided to them. Now, uh, I I know our politicians are very fond of using the in the current economic climate excuse, but something really needs to be done about this because these children, particularly those on the spectrum, require specialist intervention, and they do quite well when they get it. Mm. Uh, But when they don't get it, they struggle. We do not understand their world. And I don't know that they really understand ours. Yes. To be honest with you. And and I suppose, as you say, it's autism is a family condition. And and, and so if they need some outside help 
uh, and they don't get it, it's not just affecting the 10-year-old, it affects the 7-year-old. It, it affects mom and dad. Exactly. It affects every single person, and that goes on to extended family. Mm. Because sometimes individuals have a grave difficulty accepting the condition and accepting the reality of it and are less inclined to want to provide child-minding services because they may be afraid of the youngster or just don't know how to react. Um, the availability of support services is uh, scant, unfortunately. And uh, through the public sector, we have uh, real long waiting lists around the country. Uh, a long time to get a diagnosis sometimes and a longer time to get regular, consistent professional input and mm. help. So this is a family that needs some support. And I hope mom and dad are uh, reaching out to understand the needs of the 10-year-old and the needs of the 7-year-old. Yeah. Both need some support and help. Yeah, well, and best of luck to you. Uh, I'm finding it impossible to wean my 18-month boy from breastfeeding. Why is he refusing? He also has never slept a full night. Please help, some Sarah and Carl. A <laughs> little bit out of my remit, usually, yeah. but uh, <laughs> some general generalities here. Okay, something important, he's never slept a full night. So all children are born with a different biological temperament. Some are very easy and predictable in their sleep and rhythmic eating cycles, elimination cycles. They're easy to comfort, easy to soothe. Some are quite difficult in that regard, and uh, some are slow to warm up. Mm. It just takes them a lot longer time. So we have three groups, really, uh, of temperament. So the more difficult and bristly the temperament, the more difficult it is to rear the child. It's a greater challenge for the parents. Yeah. Now, mom here is trying to wean the 18-month-old, and, and uh, she doesn't know why he's refusing. Well, 18 months old and infants don't like sudden change. So the best thing to do may not be to try to remove completely and immediately the breast, but remove one feeding a week only. Yeah. Um, if you're doing four feedings a day, you can solve the problem in a month that way. But you have to target your removal schedule. Start with the easiest feeding to remove. In other words, the feeding at which the child spends the least amount of time at the breast. And then provide a distraction for the child. The distraction might be another food substance. It might be a little spoonful or two or a dish of ice cream on top of some cereal. Something really silly like that that's quite tasty. Children are going to kick up a fuss when they're being weaned because it's new and different and it's frightening to their brain. Mm. You need infinite patience. You need to tackle it over a period of time. Uh, you need to watch your own reaction to the child because they're always looking at you. And any sign of frustration or annoyance on your face is going to be internalized by the child very quickly. So the, uh, the guidelines are slow and gradual removal over a period of time, one uh, feeding uh, a week to be removed. Sometimes for some children, you may have to remove one feeding and then wait two weeks before you remove the second. Yes. It's a okay. case by case yeah. basis. I think, uh, mom, there's a huge amount. Uh, this is Sarah. Sarah, there's a lot of information. Uh, on the internet and the La Le Leche League and whatnot can really give you guidance. So you may want to just do a little bit of research. I've helped the best I can, but uh, I've never done this thing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, we have to take a commercial break. We'll uh, talk more with the non breastfeeding David Carey after this. Parenting on Moncrief, brought to you by Kellogg's Cereals. Still the number one choice for Irish families. <laughs> 1890-453-106 is our local number. Our text number is 53106. That will cost you 30 cents. You can follow us on Facebook or Twitter or send us an email to afternoon at newstalk.ie. Consulting psychologist David Carey still with us uh, for our parenting slot. Uh, next question is from Maria. Uh, she says, could you ask David about the Xbox for junior infants? I've been really taken aback by the number of boys we've had over for play dates who can seem to play with toys and are constantly asking for an Xbox, TV or DS. Light. I think we're right not to have them, but are we missing something? You're not missing a thing, Maria. You are doing everything right. I fail to see any logical reason why children in junior infant classes age four and five on average should have an Xbox, a DS, a DS Lite, a laptop, or any such things unless they have a particular special education condition, in which case they can benefit hmm. from some of the uh, absolutely brilliant apps that are available on iPads. 
Um, like you, Maria, I am astonished and appalled at how many young people, well under the age of 12, have access to Xbox, PlayStation, etc., and are playing games like Call of Duty. And what's that car one uh, where you crash? Grand Theft Auto. Thank you yeah. very much, yes. Uh, I mean, I constantly hear about this. And I'm just wondering, where are the parents? Are there more people having children these days and fewer parents? Have I, <laughs> have I missed something? Uh, what happened to just saying, no, we don't do this mm. at your age? And once they become of age, and I don't know when that is, by the way, Sean, maybe you can help. Eight, well, no, well, nine? It, it is a tricky one, but it, it just seems like junior, a uh, junior inference. Mother of God, that's nuts. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Well, it's bad for their brain. What became of reading and using your imagination? And what became of someone telling you stories? Fascinating, illogical, ridiculous stories about things to stimulate okay. your mind's eye. But if you look at it from the five-year-old's point of view, uh, um, uh, little Johnny, who's, let's say, Maria's son is called Johnny, and uh, everyone in his class has an Xbox, and then but all the other kids go, do you have an Xbox? No, we tell stories in our house. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, uh, see, uh, see you around, Johnny. See you uh, around, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the problem, though, isn't that it? That is the problem, yes. And it is a huge problem for parents these days. I, I'm really thanking God that none of this technology was available when I was uh, trying to raise two daughters. Um, it was complicated enough without all this <laughs> yeah. stuff. But uh, I really feel for parents now But it, because, of course, all their friends have it. All their friends are doing it. And the worst thing is they're going to their friends' houses where they're doing it there, and then mm. they come home and they don't have access to it. Still and all, I think it is the responsibility of parents to give to children what they need, not what they want. Yeah. Uh, there will come a time when Xbox and PlayStation and Nintendo DS and all that stuff will do no harm to the life of a young child. It needs to be supervised, however. What I'm seeing and hearing more and more, and I know you're hearing this too, is the young adolescent with the iP um, iPod in his or her bedroom, and they're on it all night long. Mm. Till 2 or 3 in the morning texting away, because their little friends are texting away all night long. It's unsupervised. They're not getting enough sleep. There's some research from the UK that uh, is indicating, we don't have definitive answers yet, that the light emitted from screens, yes, iPads yeah. and whatnot, interferes with the brain sleep cycle. So they're arriving at school fatigued. In addition to which, if you take it away from them, they wake up in the morning and there are 37 text messages on the phone when you give it back to them. And now they're annoyed with you and they've missed all these text messages from their friends. They were awake half the night. It's not text messages. It's Snapchat. Well, it's whatever. One of the things. They send each other pictures and stuff. Uh, um, it's all, I don't know. It, 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 it's literally like every three weeks there's a new app. And for some, somehow they all manage to migrate over. Uh, to the new thing. I'm impressed that you know these things yeah. and uh, deeply discouraged yeah. that I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's quite complicated, but Maria, I'm with you 100%. Uh, junior infants, no, no, no is the answer, N-O. Okay, right. Uh, if you wouldn't mind putting the uh, the headphones on there, David, right. uh, uh, because actually we do have uh, a caller on the line. Uh, uh, it's Caroline uh, in Cork, not the Caroline Clark. This is a different Caroline. Good afternoon, Caroline. Good afternoon. Uh, tell us about your four-year-old. My four-year-old is um, fantastic, very, um, you know, very self-willed, I would call it. Um, she She's going through this phase at the moment where she hates black clothes, doesn't like dresses with pockets, um, won't wear things that I bought for her. Um, I've had to give so much stuff away, it's not real. And then when, say, I do push the issue and get her to put the clothes on, she can tear things off the clothes. If I reprimand her and put her to her room because the bowl step doesn't work, she um, thrashes her bedroom. And, you know, I, I just don't know how to deal deal with this really. Um, I know it's probably a really simple thing, but this is happening every day. Um, I have taken her out to the shops and things to pick out clothes. And yet she'll come home and say, no, I don't like that again. And then there's a second issue, which is she started to lash out at other kids as well if they don't kind of conform to her way of thinking. Um, and it's, it's starting to become a bit of an issue. And the worst thing which has happened, and I'm completely mortified about it, is she started to use the F word. So I, I'm kind of, she's, I feel she's spiraling out of control a little. Um, and I'm not 
knocking my own parenting skills because I do trust them. But at the same time, I, I, I feel she's a little bit of a live wire and I don't know where to where to rein her in. Okay, to. I'm going to help you here. Let's start with the most egregious uh, issue here. That is the use of the F word. Time out is always the response when the F word is used. How old is she? She's four, She's right? Four, yeah. <clears throat> that means four minutes of time out, and you have to yeah. be consistent. When, when the four minutes are up, and by the way, if she leaves time out before the four minutes, you non-verbally just have to carry her back to the time out area. Should be a place where she can see you, but not interact right. with you, okay? Yeah. Um, when it's time for time out, you have to ask her, do you have anything to say? Yes, I do, Mommy. I'm sorry. What are you sorry for? I'm sorry I said a bad word. Next question is, what should you have done instead? That's a very important question because we have to teach her how to behave. It sounds to me like she's having some anger management issues. Yeah. And she's a very willful child. That will be put yeah. to good use later in life because that the other side of what we call stubborn is yeah. perseverance. And okay. perseverance applies very well in academic settings and in work settings when you're confronted with problems and you stick it out till you solve it. Now, okay. she's only four. She's still learning. Her okay. ability to tolerate frustration is a little bit low. We'll have to teach her. I think you're doing the right thing by letting her pick some clothes. And uh -huh. what you need to do the night before when it's bedtime, ask her to pick out two outfits that she thinks she might wear the, want to wear the next morning. Uh -huh. And then the next morning, those two outfits are laying out there for for her and she can choose whichever one she wants and if she doesn't choose one or the other well you're going to have to maybe force her to make a choice you have to be a little bit firm and very very patient i'd start with the f word however that's yeah. the big stake issue because if yeah. she's using it in the family home there's a chance she'll use it outside of the family yeah, she home. Has. Okay, she has well then you it. need, okay, you need to start with the F word. It. You need to start with the F word. Okay. <clears throat> and use time out every time she uses it. It's extremely important. You want to extinguish that behavior. And yeah. I'm sure you'll be successful if you're yeah. consistent about that. That's where okay. to begin. I wouldn't worry about the clothing too much just yet. F word Sorry. first, aggression second, clothing third. Okay. Prioritize. Best of luck, okay. Caroline. And keep Thank it, you. Keep in mind, we'll all be working for her one day. So uh, <laughs> put, in, put in a good word for me and David as well. Please. <laughs> thanks for that. Right, thanks, Great. Caroline. Take care. Bye. Uh, my wife and I have been separated for five years, and we've got a good routine for our two children. My daughter is 11, and my ex mentioned that she's just had a sex education class at school. I was just wondering what I should do to make her feel comfortable should she get her period when she's staying with me. Should I get sanitary towels in? I asked my ex. She seemed to think it was too early for our daughter and told me to calm down. I just don't want her to feel, or I, to feel awkward. It's never too early to be prepared. So you need to find out from the ex what uh, kind of um, sanitary uh, equipment that she wants the child to use, be it mm. tampons or pads or whatever. That's uh, generally speaking, um, the mother knows best about those things. Uh, and you need to have them in the house because uh, she's 11. She could start menstruating at any time. Could yeah. happen today. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, hopefully she's been... Um, alerted to the fact that this is a natural process and it means she's becoming a grown-up girl and turning into a woman. I hope mom and you have done that job. If you have, you have no reason to be concerned about when it happens or that it will happen. But you do have to have the right supplies for her available. That's critically important. So I don't think you need to say any more. She's been exposed to sex education at school, whatever that means. Um, <laughs> and she's probably well uh, used to it. I think part of your uh, ex is, um, advice is is good. Just calm down. Let's not make a big deal out of this. Yes, it is part exactly. of living. Yeah, part of living. Yeah. And, and the I fact that you're a dad doesn't mean you should be more uncomfortable about it. Than if you're, yeah. Absolutely. But a lot of dads are because of our upbringing. You know, the older mm. we are, sometimes we were reared in strict houses where these things were never discussed. Yeah. But once you're over the age of 21 and you have a child, you're pretty much au fait with all of this, I think. I would have thought so. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think you have too much to feel awkward about or for her to feel awkward about. But I really do think you need to have the right supply at hand for her because it really could happen any day now. Mm. Thing is though, uh, if the if the eleven year old gets her period, she's in dad's house, 
and maybe she's a bit uncomfortable about saying it. Is it is it worthwhile, Dad? You know, in 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 as casual way as it's possible to say, well, just in case you get your period, it's cool. There's I th- stuff yeah, there. I think that's probably good advice. Actually, yeah, yeah. and uh, maybe once uh, Dad and uh, Mom have agreed on what kind of supplies they want to have, uh, either Mom or Dad can go out with the little girl and purchase them mm. and make sure she has two boxes: one for Mom's home, one for Dad's home. Yeah. And that way she's involved in the whole process. Uh, did David say, just say, stubbornness works out well later in life? My father gives out to me for being stubborn and I'm 33, uh, says the grumpy farmer in tip. Uh, on, on relation to uh, the, the young, uh, the kids and Xboxes, with regards to the five-year-old versus Xbox debate, I have two words that may solve many problems. Roll Dahl. Uh, the man was a genius and his books are still very entertaining. Uh, what, is it like a Roll Dahl Xbox game? Is that what you're saying? Uh, that would really solve the problem. Uh, our fi- no, I know what you're saying. Our five-year-old boy knows very little about computers, has no game consoles, and loves playing cowboys and Indians, soldiers like we did at that age. When he watches TV after school at his grandparents' house, he loves Time Team. It's very funny to see how he spends his time outside digging trenches looking for finds. That's brilliant. I'm so happy, which is brilliant. That is fabulous. I just hope, though, that when, you know, if he's in school and he tries to play Cowboys and Indians with other five-year-olds, they know what it is. Do children still play Cowboys and Indians? I don't know. Do they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. I live in a cul-de-sac and there's uh, probably about seven or eight boys and a couple of girls. And yeah, they do. They play Cowboys and Indians. That's probably not PC or something anymore. We're supposed to be not it's, to call it, you know. It keeps them away from the telly. Yeah, it's cowboys <laughs> and called, Native Americans. Should it be now, called, yeah, yeah, white oppressors and Native Americans <laughs> now? Or something of, uh, something of that nature.